when we start to look at macroeconomic analysis, one of the thing that's one thing that's pretty important to understand is that macro is based upon all the little things that are going on in the economy. So as one market changes at the micro level, there's a change that can take place at the macro level. Basically what we're doing is we're taking all of the changes in all of the markets in terms of demand and supply and putting them together or aggregating them into a model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So all of the demand that happens in the micro level is kind of crammed together to give us aggregate demand. And all of the supply that happens at the micro level is crammed together to give us aggregate supply at the macro level. But when we look at the model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply, we have to be careful here because what is the price of a, of a car versus the price of a computer is very, very different. So instead of using price, we use something called the price level, the general price level. Oftentimes, this is the consumer price index, which is the way we typically measure prices across the economy. If the CPI goes up, it means there's inflation, and if it goes down, there's deflation. When we look at aggregate demand, it behaves very much like demand in any other market, understandably because it's made up of the demands of all these little markets. So if the price goes up, it encourages people to buy less, and if the price goes down, it, it encourages people to buy more, so the aggregate demand curve is downward sloping. On the aggregate supply side, we see that if price goes up, it encourages people to produce more, and if the price level goes down, it encourages people to produce less as a whole. And so we have an upward sloping aggregate supply curve. When we put these two things together, we find an equilibrium in the macro economy where the two lines intersect. Now the question is whether or not that equilibrium is what we want for our economy. One thing that we look for at the macro level is a point called the full employment level. At full employment, we have the we are producing essentially on the production possibilities curve. We're using our resources efficiently to produce as much as we can. We have some unemployment at the margin as people try to find new jobs, as people switch back and forth. But as a whole, this is the level we want to achieve. And the question becomes whether or not that equilibrium is at the full employment level. If the equilibrium employment is below the full employment level, that can signal that we might have persistent unemployment, which of course is a very bad thing for your economy, especially if that persistent level is, is a high, at a high level. Similarly, if the equilibrium price is above the full employment price, then we might have persistent inflation, which means that prices keep rising and rising and rising, and we've got a problem there as well. Things come on the scene that may change us or may move us out of equilibrium and either towards the full employment or away from full employment. These things are oftentimes referred to as shocks. Shocks to aggregate demand or aggregate supply. Unexpected events that cause there to be a shift in aggregate demand or aggregate supply. On the supply side of things, things like natural disasters, Icelandic volcanoes, Hurricane Katrina, acts of terrorism, things like that can can change the position of the aggregate supply curve very quickly and unexpectedly, leading us to higher inflation, lower output, higher unemployment, things that we don't want to have. On the demand side of things, again, big changes can happen as far as um, things like immigration, things like terrorism, um, changes that are unexpected that affect people's desire, ability to buy or sell are known as shocks to the economy. This opens up the realm for government to engage in the economy and try to change the position of the aggregate demand or aggregate supply curve. Keynesian policy tends to focus on aggregate demand through fiscal policy, taxing and spending. Increasing taxes or decreasing government spending to shift the aggregate demand curve to the left to hopefully reduce inflation, or, incre or increasing government spending and decreasing taxes to shift the aggregate supply to the right to hopefully to increase output. 
On the supply side of things, supply siders focus their policy attentions, whether they be taxing or spending on the fiscal side, towards the business, towards the supply side of the economy. Now, one significant difference between Keynesians and supply siders is their use of monetary policy. Monetary policy is typically a Keynesian policy because it affects aggregate demand. It causes us, if there's more money, to buy more things to shift the aggregate demand curve out and to the right. So one last thing before we go. Think about this situation. Let's say that there is a terrorist attack in New York City and there's a significant disruption of the financial system of the banking and the lending process. How is that going to affect the economy? We go through a comparative static process, it can affect either the aggregate demand or the aggregate supply, or perhaps both. It would change, it would cause those curves to shift in a particular direction and then it would land us, land us at a new equilibrium. In this case, I think what would happen is it would shift both curves, it would decrease both curves. People would be less willing to spend because of Fear, and businesses would be interrupted because the cost of borrowing would go up. So both curves would shift to the left. This would lead us to have lower output and an uncertain impact on price on the general price level. Definitely output falls because there's less available and people are buying less. Price could go up or, or it could go down. Based on the way this graph is drawn, prices end up increasing. And that's what you need to do. You need to follow your graph, see what it says, see what it tells you, and answer accordingly. This is one of the reasons why macroeconomics is much more complicated than micro, because what can happen in the world has an impact on so many different markets, it's sometimes hard to tell what the actual effects will be.